Well, we're glad to have this opportunity to talk a little bit about how um, PTA groups can collaborate to do environmental programming that's um, more diverse and reaches the audience in um, a variety of ways rather than just being didactic. And so I'm Lucy Lee, and I've been on the Shawnee Mission Area Council Environmental Committee, and I've also worked at Briarwood uh, as the environmental committee chair there. And I'd have the pleasure to work with Nicole Emanuel, who's been the Art Smart and Cultural Arts Chair. And Nicole, I wondered if you could just talk a little bit about how you've incorporated um, environmental programming with Art Smart and Cultural Arts. And then you can introduce one of the artists that yeah, you work with. Yeah, Nedra Bonds. Um, well, the I'm a muralist and a sculptor and a painter. And having been in community arts all my life, when I had the opportunity to hire artists from the community to come into our schools, not just to teach whatever art form they're working on, but also the history of how they became an artist, we got the opportunity through the Green Schools Grant and the PTA Match to teach environmental stewardship through a variety of art forms. Um, and what we have with us is an example um, is an artist, Nedra Bonds, who is uh, local and very um, well-renowned. And her work with dolls and textiles was one of the ways that we exemplified the reuse of materials. And we had a broad range of artists. Do you want to talk a little bit about your these pieces? Um. I'm a quilter um, for the most part, but there are always pieces left over after doing that. So I decided to make dolls, and these are some examples of some of the kinds of dolls that I make with leftover pieces from quilting. You can see the pieces in these are very small pieces, but that's because that's what was left over. Mm -hmm. So um, I come from a family that didn't believe in throwing anything away, so we just pack it all up in packages and boxes and save it and use it like this. Well, and another example was we had uh, a mural made out of garbage, and the garbage was cut into very small pieces and organized by color, and it was recycling plastic and paper and pieces of things that are safe uh, and clean to use. And the resulting image is a mosaic of children recycling, and that will be in the cafeteria, and that further repeats the lessons we're trying to teach the kids about composting and recycling, which they do very heavily in the ca in the cafeteria, which was the environmental committee. Uh, and Nicole, could you talk a little bit about what you found over time about um, what methods of teaching and what kinds of art the kids responded to by age group? Well, the really young kids loved the singer and songwriter, and so he would come and the storyteller. So the singer-songwriter was Chris Doolittle, and every one of his songs ha has a very catchy tune with the rhyming, and the lyrics are all about environmentalism, and the kids would then go into the playground, and the teachers reported to me that they would go on and sing those songs in the future. So they got the whole thing with the auditory learning, and then we had the storyteller, and she talked about cross-cultural history of um, human relationships to the environment, and so she would tell Native American stories, or we have a large um, Latin American population in our school, or African American, and to talk about how some of the folklore and mythology was based in the relationship between culture and earth. And um, we had sculptors that reuse garbage to make um, little robots with the kids, which that was really popular in third and fourth grade. And um, the mural, the garbage mural was first graders. So we had other programs. 